in the beginning, there was a, around 1860, uh, there was a federal program to uh, build levees so that they can reclaim uh, the land. Roughly 1,115 miles of levees protect farms, cities, and people around the Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta. It overflows every year, and so without the levees, it's just like not much of a use. To tame the waters in the Delta, Chinese laborers from the recently completed Transcontinental Railroad were enlisted to build 4 by 12 foot dirt mound levees with little more than shovels and wheelbarrows. There was over 3,000 of them. And then, of course, uh, a lot of them, uh, after built the levees, uh, the state of farm workers. When completed, the Chinese ultimately helped transform over a half million acres of swamp into some of California's most valuable farmland. But instead of leaving, many stayed here in the town of Locke. The whole thing about Locke is that we're, we're still currently a living community, as well as being National Historic Landmark. Constructed in 1915, Locke was the first California town built by Chinese immigrants. And so instantly we felt interested because of the heritage. At the time, Chinese people could not own land, so they leased it from a man by the name of George Locke, who ultimately sold it to this man, Clarence Chu. The main thing is to preserve the history of the town. Despite some minor upgrades, the town has changed very little in the past 100 years. Walk downtown, and you can't help but notice that time has taken its toll on many of the structures. Outside boards are warping, and many of the buildings are tilting. And it doesn't get much better on the inside. So the, uh, the floor here, it's, it's, it's very wavy. Why, yes. Why is it like this? Well, because uh, when they first built the town, they, they want to do a quick job. So there is no foundation underneath the building. Douglas Xia is the president of the Lock Management Association, and he helps give tours and preserve the Chinese history in town. Welcome to the Dai Loi Gambling Hall, the Monte Carlo of California in the 1950s. During and after the 1920s Prohibition era, Locke built up a certain reputation with gamblers and partygoers. For decades, law enforcement turned a blind eye to a number of the businesses in town. They say that every other building in Locke has either been used as a brothel, gambling hall, or opium den. Thanks to riverboats and new roads, businesses in Locke made a lot of money off high-ranking politicians and businessmen traveling back and forth from Sacramento and San Francisco. It's a full-scale industrial kitchen to serve a lot of meals for a lot of uh, important people. Whether it was grocery stores, boarding houses, or department stores, Locke could cater to Americans, but the people here never forgot their Chinese roots. In fact, the Republic of China even paid for this school, which only taught lessons in Chinese. Because there's always a fear among the Chinese that one day they may be shipped back to China. That fear of getting sent back to China was real. Many were deported from the U.S. because of the 1882 Chinese Exclusion Act, which also prevented people of Asian descent from owning land. In fact, the only reason that the town of Locke existed is because the Chinese were leasing it from a white landowner named George Locke. He's a true gentleman. That's all that I, we look at him as. For more than 60 years, the Locke family respectfully leased the land to the people of Locke until they sold it to Clarence Chu in 1977. 30 years later, he sold the land to Sacramento County in order to officially make the community of Locke the town of Locke. They can acquire finally the land underneath the building. Yeah, that was a historic uh, process. Today, Locke is a designated National Historic Landmark, so the heritage and the legacy of the Chinese community will live on forever. This is not a Hollywood set. This is original. This is the real thing. From the historic Chinese river town on the California Delta, I'm John Bartell. Hope to see you on the back road.